Welcome to Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, and today I am here with Richard Stephen Bell, and you are the Executive Director of Cinema Ed, and Gerard and Amsalem. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you are the president of your own production company, mm -hmm. New Way. Yeah. Thank you exactly. both so much for being here. Thank you to yeah. you. We're happy to be here. <laughs> so you both have your own production company, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show, but also because you have collaborated in what is called What If Not Now. And when If Not I'm Now. I'm sorry, When If Not Now. That's okay. And what uh, what? <laughs> that would be a good title. That's a good we one. We should change it. Maybe the next time, right? <laughs> yeah. So When If Not Now is a collaborative um, movie, mini movie. Can you explain what it is? And um, actually, even before sure. that, can you explain a little bit about your individual production companies? So you can start first, Stephen. Okay. Um, okay, well, my production company is called Cinema Ed Films, and it's actually a nonprofit production oh, okay. company, uh, meaning that uh, obviously most people know what nonprofit means, but it, it basically, uh, if you uh, donate to help us make our films, it's tax deductible. And we actually have a, an Indiegogo campaign going right now. It actually ends tonight. Um, and we've done pretty well. And it's basically for seed funding. But uh, our goal is to take independent filmmaking and turn it into teaching modules to bring into high schools to help engage at-risk students. And Gerard and I, well, I mean, we can talk about this later. I don't right, want to take up right. too much time. It's a long story. But we're both teachers. <laughs> we're both okay. former teachers. Uh, he actually still teaches, yeah. and uh, I mm -hmm. taught for four years in the system. And but, are you film teachers, or what? Uh, Gerard is a film teacher. Okay. I was an English literature teacher. Uh, okay. But I'm also an actor and a screenwriter. And so mm -hmm. when I stopped teaching, I started acting and screenwriting more. And uh, our collaboration kind of came out of mm -hmm. that. So did you all know each other before, yes. uh, like as teachers, or no. did you, you knew each other as? Yeah, for a long time we know each other, like for about, uh, I would say 20 years or more. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very interesting, just to see how we started this, is like the first collaboration we did with Bartleby like two years ago, got some awards, you know, so um, it came to the point that one day I had this story in my head that I wanted to put in film because this is really my background, you know, making things, you know, films and and paintings. And I said, who can I choose Bartleby? And I was thinking about some, some vision of like, who will be a great actor to do this? And Richard came in my mind. So I went oh, to Richard. Okay. And I say, Richard, you know, here's this story, you know, this idea, you know, that uh, it's taking from a very famous Melville story, being like uh, in literature too. I say, let's take this and try to do something. And the collaboration started from there. I sit down, we put things together, and the film started, and it became Bartleby in the film, and the film, uh, you know, become like what it is, with a kind of a success, short film, um, and, and when you say short, is it 15 minutes? Is it right, exactly. minutes? It's, it's, well, it's 15, yeah, yeah. 12, 15 well, minutes. Yeah. But okay. uh, that is a short film. Yeah. And then from there, when we finish this, we see the, the really like all the success. We say, let's go on the next one. And one, if not now, is coming from there with an idea. And Richard, you know, having this idea about education, we put all this together. So in this, you know, Richard is like, you know, is really like the representation of like the process of the nonprofit organization. And in one way, maybe a little more like the process of me making in a lot of ways I am, I am, I mean, I don't know, maybe kind of the one we're thinking about, like more obsessed about making it. So New Wave, oh, I see. New Wave is more production company, real production company who makes film. Okay. So that's a little bit the difference. But again, it's very connected because in this new movie, we produce both of them, the film, he's going to write the screenplay, the main bad part of the story. So there is a lot of movement into the production of And this. you both are actually actors in this. Not me. No. No. Uh, Gerard is actually the director. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the actor, there? the actor on the poster is uh, an actor named James Whalen. Mm -hmm. and okay. He is. Uh, he is from. He's an, actually an actor from Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, who we cast in the role right. to play opposite me, mm -hmm. and um, he's a very good actor. Very good actor. Yes. Very sound and. Uh, I am really into more into like the production and the directing and all this aspect of making films. So and by teaching films, this too is very important for me. And by doing what I'm doing outside of this, you know, the the idea of like the creative process, where it is, what are we doing? But the mind are like com really communicating and like we are like contributing to each other and to the well of each other because as much as Richard gave me some really great idea and I do and we contribute to do things who are really uh, working out for the time being he does right <laughs> right well actually as Gerard said Bartleby was kind of like uh, the the uh, starting point for where we wanted to go it and it was a it was really a unique I think mm -hmm. collaboration because Gerard is coming from he's a he's an artist mm -hmm. he's an abstract artist mm -hmm. uh, an abstract painter mm -hmm. and his 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 view is very um, uh, for lack of a better I word I am abstract I'm a very he's abstract yes abstract. he's abstract okay. and as a screenwriter I'm very linear and mm -hmm. very story oriented so when we decided we started working on Bartleby. Um, Gerard would have one perspective, and I would have another. Yeah, we'll Obviously, I wrote the script, yeah. but um, we would we would kind of bang our heads together, mm -hmm. which we like to do. And yeah, that's I mean, and like and what came here. out of it was, yeah. I think, uh, something something sorry. special. Yeah. Because it, we we each gave a little. You know? Oh, I see. And, yeah. and, and because you have such, you're coming yeah. to the project with different styles. Yes. Yeah, just different creating. style and different vision, and we still do. You know, and I still do. So we're coming from. You know, different background. You know, background was, um, I am much more experimental in the way I look at everything. Mm -hmm. uh, even film, in general. I teach film, and when I talk about film, I like this film, we're out of the box. Was it going into a certain limit? And Bartleby was a, a combination of both. You know, still very linear, telling a story, but still very experimental in the way I was shot. And it's what we want to try to do again with uh, one, if not now, it's like taking the ideas, the ideas that, you know, we can share put it out there, but still having something commercially viable that people can yeah. watch. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you know what I'd like to do at this point? I'd like to take a look at the the short clip, sure. and then we can discuss it mm -hmm. right after. Sure. So we'll take a moment and look at it right now. Mm -hmm. So we're back, and um, that was a great clip because it showed a very short, you know, mm -hmm. short part of the film. Um, it's it's really just uh, the opening trailer okay. that we shot to kind of. Uh, it was part of our Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign, right. and we just wanted to give the audience something right away to give them a sense of what the story was going to be about. Like someone would look at that and go, well, who's these two guys? I, I have no idea. They're brothers, they have, it looks right. like they have totally different lives and That's takes, right. you know, That's different right. tastes. Um, and so when you're bringing this to high school students and, and specifically to, uh, to at-risk students, what are you trying to uh, get? What, what is the, the purpose of, of showing them this type of film? Well, it's actually, the, we're not actually showing them this type of film. What we're actually trying to do is get them involved in the actual process of making the film. So there's going to need to be a production budget. There's going to need to be a production timeline. The kids are going to have to learn how to do lighting. They're going to have to learn how to do screenwriting because there's going to be edits to the film. We want to actually take the production of the film itself into schools as teaching modules. And uh, we found that at-risk kids, at least I found when I taught, that it's the difficulty is how to engage a kid, how to raise a kid's self-esteem, because okay. a lot of the at-risk kids are struggling. And the easiest way for me, I know when I taught, was to engage them in story, how to tell a story. Everybody has a story to tell. And a lot of these kids are just waiting to tell a story and to learn how to tell a story. And what we want to do is teach them 
how to do that because with digital media now, it's the the tools they're right in front of your nose. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, this is this is what every kid has, <laughs> right? And you can make a movie with this yeah. now. So we know how to make movies as professional independent filmmakers with the big cameras, with the DSLRs, with the red, you know, with the Sony DSLRs, and with the lighting and with the sound. Now, the kids are going to learn how to do that, but they're also going to learn how they can make their own films. With like the from scratch. From scratch. Instead of having, uh, I know my son, who's in high school, uh, spends a lot of time like this, you know. And I know he's not doing homework, right? <laughs> and it, and wouldn't it be great if what he was doing was, you know, planning out a storyline? Right. Because he is interested in filmmaking. And a lot of kids are, but, uh, you know, you need to, they need to have classes that are going to teach them and how so to do it. And so is that what you're proposing to do, to take, to show people... Um, this clip, or you know, the or is this just completely? This separate clip is just an example mm -hmm. of, of the storyline. Really, it. it's just to tell crowdfunding sources, people who are watching online, what story are they trying to tell? That, and this is the story. But how we're going to get the film made is actually what Cinema Ed and New Waves Productions is, because New Waves is the is the professional filmmaking company okay. that's going to help us. Okay. With a with a uh, an award winning director, who's going to direct the film, <laughs> right here, right? <laughs> right? And then you would you would take this into the school, right. and then the students would take. Would, now would all the students be able to uh, uh, do a little bit of the the screenwriting, yeah. helping with the budget, helping with the acting, all of that, or will certain it's, students do certain it's, segments? It's of all the film? you know. I mean, in the production of film, we're gonna make a film, a film of quality. So we have to be very careful of what we get the kids involved. I'm not saying that we're gonna get them involved in everything because there is some part of the filmmaking who are very tedious and everything else. Right. But just the fact to be a part of a crew who is making a film is already extraordinary. I'm not talking about doing anything important, but just to see how do we make a film. Because in school, you don't see this. You know, in school, I teach film. You see them doing their own project. But the idea is to put them in a professional level, having them at the middle of a professional crew, and eventually we'll see, but they're going to be supervised by people who are trying to make a film. So it's not oh, like we are trying to make them connect with the independent world, and eventually, you know, I mean, they will be able to make it. But there is still the idea on the back that this is going to be a viable, good film. So, so they're going to be professionals who are going to be assisting sure, them every absolutely. single part of the way. It's not going to be a student. No. Run no, film. Right. So, yeah. like, let's say the, the student will be maybe able to add on to help on the camera or to bring something in, but it will be a shot. I will call the shot. I will talk to the actor. I will do all these things that any kind of in director does. So, this is going to be a great experience for them right. because they're going to be, be involved directly into the filmmaking without maybe touching everything and doing everything, but eventually they will. Right. And they will have a background with more professional than being as just play. Right. So now I connected as really like a real filmmaking, which will know? be very valuable to very me, valuable. both in and at, during that time and and long term as well. Yeah. Well, we actually have about thirty seconds left, so we're gonna actually come back on the other side, and I want you to tell us um, maybe you could give us more specific information about how like what you expect to come from your from this effort. So, this is Dustin's kaleidoscope, and we will be right back. Local government, local educational institutions, and local community members all use cable access TV to communicate their message. They depend upon it as an affordable means of outreach. Public educational and government access television empowers local government agencies, individuals, and groups to use the media to speak directly to their constituents in a more direct and cost-effective way. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. We're back, and we are here with Richard and Gerard. Um, thanks again for being here. And at the at the end of the last segment, we were talking a little bit about um, what you expect to get, or what you expect the students to get from um, this from this professional collaboration. And maybe Gerard, you could tell us a little bit about what you would expect to see from the students. 
Well, is it really the idea like any teachers want to do or any artist wants to is to expose. Before anything, you have to expose people in an environment and try to really explain them and being involved in the fact of how do they connect with this? How, where do they find a place? And like what uh, Richard has been saying, that these kids at risk most of the time find this into the creative field. I teach, I've been teaching for 17, 18 years, and I can tell you there is two very clear groups. There is the academic group who are doing very well in the system, and there is everything else often, often the, the really big group of creative people who are often at risk will find really something very positive in this. Positive in, you know, being able to be, uh, you know, a part of the production, but finding themselves to and the, you know, bringing their self-esteem to a point that to be function is so often as artists. Remember one thing, and I say it all the time, that most of the artists was non-functional in school. They right, were the kid true. at risk, 95%. Very People true. say, oh, this is a great artist. It could be Picasso, it could be Matisse. Nobody does well in school. Any creative mind do not do well in school because in this structure which is very rigid, they don't find their place. So that's the card. The card is like, just make a space for these people who can really find them. And if they find their self-esteem there, we have something done or we did something. Right. You know, and so Richard, is that the yes. same well, thing here? Well, he expecting? hit it right on the head because right now in New Jersey, in the United States, arts funding for schools is being slashed. Yeah. It's been slashed for years and it continues to mm -hmm. be slashed. And really what we're trying to do with our film and with the nonprofit production company, Cinema Ed, is to be able to go to a school and say, we have these film teaching modules for you and we will provide them to you at no cost to you because we're going to be grant funded, we're going to be funded from outside sources, and the schools themselves will have, will be able to offer to the kids their choice of modules, probably as an elective, yes, uh, to help the kids that need it the most. And focusing on at-risk kids is really what we want to do. And, that, and the key word for Gerard was exposure. The key word for me is engagement. Because uh, an engaged kid is a learning student. And even though some people say, oh, well, it's just film, you know, no, you can, you can take a student and have them make a film and they can involve their math class, they can involve their physics class, they can involve their English class. The film itself can be a vehicle for that student to focus on all their classes. So it, it serves basically as a platform for them to excel in other areas besides yes. film, yeah. yes. cinematography, and movies, etc. Yes. Yes. Really, it's all a question of self-esteem. It all comes back to the same thing. How do I fit it? How good I am in something? Mm -hmm. you know, comparing to a system who is valuing one thing, you know, who is like, obviously, the test taking right. and all right. this very, very classical intelligence. Right. That is what it is. You know, I mean, kids at risk are just kids who are not yeah. feeling into what's giving to them. And they could care less this. about, I mean, most kids that are at risk, that are struggling, don't want to, don't care about the standardized tests. Or they may care about the standardized tests, but they yeah. don't have the self-esteem to do well yeah. on them. And, it's not mm -hmm. so and them. to get the focus off that and on them as a person, to create a community for them, to create friends, to create a, a film crew that they can identify with and make, tell stories with and make films mm -hmm. with, I mean, that's, that's something that, you know, we think it's just such an excited, I'm, I'm excited about being able to do it because right. as, as an actor and a screenwriter, you know, you want to go beyond entertainment with the stuff yeah. that you write. You want to have well, some sort of impact. You know, I have like, I have more reserve about it than Richard, <laughs> you know, and he knows. I've been a teacher for a long time. I know what the plus and the minus of school system. I know the rigidity. I know how difficult it is to break through. I know how difficult it is to bring new ideas. I mean, the ideas are great, but it's, it's going to take work. It is. I can tell you, and I know, and and we know and it's that. it's a long-term project. Gonna take, it's not like we're going to go into schools uh, tomorrow and do it. It's a very, right. you know, and like everything in life, everything you're doing, you have to believe in it and go after it. And hopefully by showing your passion and your involvement, 
is gonna bring some more things, and uh, as as we go, you know, we're gonna build it up, obviously. Yeah, so, like, yeah. Yes. So it sounds like part of what you have to do is not only bring this to the school systems or to a particular class or wherever mm -hmm. you decide to go, but part of your task is to actually educate sure. the school system yes. Yes. and exactly. that this is valuable, yeah. that this exactly. is a long-term yeah. benefit for your students right. and because it's a new like it's a new approach. Yeah. It really is, and uh, yeah, that's ex you hit you hit it on the head. Yeah. It's because you want to go into a school and actually work with them. You don't want to be a threat to them. Right. You want to be able to go in and talk and and say, what do you need? And how can we help you? That's really yeah. our approach. It's not like, oh, we have yeah. a better idea. We're right. going to teach better than you. You want to work but with them. You want to work with them. Yeah. Yes. And I, I, you know, I did want to show people some of your mm -hmm. posters from some of your uh, previous work. Sure, so sure. you mentioned Bartleby. Yes. And I wanted to show this. And uh, if people wanted to see this, where could they actually? find us. Well, hopefully it will be one day online, you know, I don't know, are we planning well, to put we, it online? we have not, and, it's not on, you can't see it on the internet, basically because it's been at film festivals, and right. most film festivals oh. will not let you post something online, right. but we are uh, pressing DVDs in January, okay. and they will be available on our website, right. which is cinemaed.org, cinemaed.org, and also newwaveproductions.com. Okay, and then the, the, <laughs> The campaign that you currently have, well, which ends today yes. on Indiegogo, is when, if not now, right. and this is just the, the... This is the funding campaign for the film and Cinema Ed. It's being run through Cinema Ed, which okay. is a nonprofit, so all donations to when, if not now, and Cinema Ed are tax deductible, and any gift that is given... Uh, before the end of this year will be tax deductible this year. Perfect. And you mentioned that you have won some awards for this? Or was uh, for well, actually, the awards that we won was for Bartleby. Oh, Bartleby. okay. And what right? did you win? What awards did you win? Well, uh, uh, hold on. It's, it's like three Like things, a ton, you know? really? Yes. Okay. Uh, Gerard won a director's citation. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. For, from the Black Mariah Film Festival. Oh, okay. Uh, which is a film festival mm -hmm. named after the film studio discovered by, or made by created by Thomas Edison, mm -hmm. from, and it's actually right here in New Jersey if you wanted to see it's the in, right. it's, 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 in in Edison? A, it's actually in West Orange, West Orange at the, the Edison uh, Museum. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And we would be remiss if we didn't mention yes. your... Yes, look at this beautiful poster. <laughs> Tell us what it is, Gerard. <laughs> well, you know, I am a f I am, I'm teaching film, you know, world film, exactly, and I'm really, this is my specialty, so I am, you know, you know, it's what I'm interested in by film from all over the world. So the past the last three years I started to offer this to adults to come to watch foreign film with an introduction, with a... Uh, a connection with a discussion after when I started by uh, European, you know, uh, series, and I went to a French series, a Spanish series, an Italian series, and it grows. The number grew, and I went from a small space to the Bert Center, and now I'm in the Sopac, who is very well established. Uh, it's growing because they all the time in interest of people to know how do I uh, connect with foreign film? What is a foreign film? Uh, and having me who know, I mean, who knows, who have been like inside it for so many years, I can bring the most important film uh, of the country. So now I'm in a Russian film series. Actually, I can tell you on January 11, I opened the club to everybody to come to watch one of the foreign films to see just what is a film club about. For free. It. For oh, free. Oh, that's wonderful. It's and a that's free a showing. Pack? That's so packed, pack. yes. Okay. On January 11, saying, come sit down and watch what you can learn from this. So it's a very interesting experience where I talk about the director, I talk about the country or the film, what I've been doing. I connect with all kinds of different things, political, social, economical, and other directors. And after the film, we discuss it. So it's really an educational. It's under education in the SOPAC website. And it has been a great experience because thinking that I could have 50 people on a beautiful spring day on Sunday afternoon, it means that there is a need. There is a need for this area to have quality film and to have education on film because film are really art form. You have to be educated. You have to know where they're coming from, why they are there, and where we're going. So this has been a great experience for me yeah. and the feeling that I accomplished something by bringing again good things to people who need, who are in need of something. Right. With, uh, and where would people find out about your film series? SOPAC. 
Oh, so bad. Okay. website. You just so okay. website. So website under education. It's within the Cinematheque, who is based out of a man. And if, and if people don't know at home, that's South Orange Performing that's Arts right. Center. Oh, that's so right. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> and under that, you find all. They have been backing me up everywhere, you know, and they have been great. There is advertising everywhere. It's, about this. it's, it's he, he really literally success. started it from a small little yeah. group meeting in a yeah. little art studio. Really? And, um, yeah. and grew it. Grew to this great film club, and, yes, and I tell, uh, uh, you, I run into people all the time who are like, "Oh, I wish I could watch a foreign film." And it's like, here it is, here it you is. know. It's, it's, so and, and learn about it because yeah. a lot of people, you know, are intimidated. Yeah, you know? right. they don't That's know, know they don't know what to say. They don't know. Well, you go to see a nineteen thirties Russian yeah. film. What is this? You know, <laughs> and so they say Netflix, not Netflix. This is really I am explaining everything. So you start after a while. I've been. Coming, you know what happened in France in 1930, what happened in Italy in 1940s, what happened in Germany in 1970, and you start to make a map of history of film, and from there you realize where we are now, why we are now, and you built an education. So again, as a teacher, it's it's interesting because in school the kids will not react the same way as an adult, and by expanding it to adult, I have a completely different different experience. And do you only, you mentioned films like from the 1940s, mm -hmm. uh, 1920s, do you focus only on those films no. or do you have no. more current? Like let's say if I take, uh, you know, the French series I started from 1947 and I finished in 2008. I pick out of the 50 years, five or six very influential filmmakers. Okay. So we're not talking, I want to see where we're coming from, where we are going. This is connected to this. If this guy did not exist, we would be there. Oh, the Japanese series is the same. We're starting in 1950s, I finished in 2008. So I say, this is the first Japanese movie you're watching. You might not like it. It does not matter. Liking, we are not there for really pure entertainment, we are here for education. So you look at it, but they are very important people. You are looking at it. You start to take things from them, and the next one you see what the progress has been, and you can compare it to another country. So you become well-rounded. It's okay. what we want as educators, with yeah. adults or with kids, <laughs> and he built a fantastic education. And you will see the reaction at the beginning of the people who are intimidated about speaking about a film that they just watch. Slowly, they feel more comfortable as they can speak. Okay. Well, we actually have less than a minute left. I want to thank you both for being here, but I just one last thing. I won't be able to have you talk at length about this, but I wanted to show your um, abstract mm -hmm. painting. You said you collaborated with yes, someone. Yes, I collaborated on this. with a man named Michael Frank. That he'd be very happy <laughs> for me to say his name. His <laughs> other, his <laughs> other partner. Oh. Right, and this painting is in the Sopak too. You know, and it's been a great experience too. So. Perfect. Well, thank you both thank you very much you. for being oh, here. Thank you for having us. This was fun. I really yeah, enjoyed it was. talking to it you. Was, yeah. um, this is Dustin's Kaleidoscope, and we will see you next time. Bye.